Hey, what's up guys? It's Technical Tim here, and I want to thank everyone so much who's been liking all my videos and subscribing to the channel. And I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And sorry I haven't sent out any videos this week. This those last couple weeks I've been busy. I've still been getting all, all out like my uh, final thoughts video and getting my podcast out with Gugabe. That the final thoughts and the podcast with Gugabe will always be out. Um, but tr like. I'll have a consistent routine where I'm literally talking about every fight too, for um, a video for every fight. So that will happen. It's just uh, been a little busy. I actually had a couple family emergencies in the last couple days, but I'm actually, you'd think I'd be like behind on taping because of that happened, but I, I actually am like ahead on taping. I'm pretty much finished and deep taped pretty much every fight. Um, been doing my research, but I also wanted to send out this video. So just for a preview, um, we have the podcast of Gugabe will be coming out tomorrow. It's currently Wednesday in Central Time in America. Um, Wednesday, June 26th. Tomorrow, the podcast with Gugabe will come out. And, um, we'll, uh, we'll really kind of preview that Nganu JDS card. And, but I wanted to send, just because I haven't been sending out too many videos this week. I just want to send like a quick kind of preliminary thoughts video of kind of where I'm at on taping and kind of like I'll briefly touch upon if, like the fights and then kind of go a little deeper in a couple of fights that I kind of have my eye on. But um, just to recap the contender series, um, it's been tough. I wanted to do preview videos for all those, but the odds have been coming out so late. Like they've been coming out on Tuesday, literally, sometimes, like, I think the first week, maybe Monday, but sometimes that's hard for me to kind of get my thoughts together, put out a video, make sure the video is actually good, like, I don't want to just send out shit um, to send shit out, like, I'm, I'm a concise type of guy, that's how I like my, the input that comes my way, so that's kind of how I keep these videos, I try to keep them useful, and, um, so that's why I hadn't really been sending those out, but, so what I'm going to do is, because of the odds have been coming out, for the, so if, I think there's six more weeks left in the Contender Series, on my Bet MMA page, I will just put up all my picks, just I'll, always check, like, 15 minutes before the event starts, because sometimes, like, the odds come out so late, and I'll put up all those picks for free on my Bet MMA page, and, like, if you follow me on Twitter, I, I, I tweeted that my picks out yesterday, um, but that's what I'll do. Just be, it's too hard to do preview videos for them without odds. Like I need odds to do it. I just don't want to talk about a fight to talk about a fight because I don't pick fighters. I pick numbers. I pick the odds. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing. So just maybe like 10, 15 minutes before the event every Tuesday, just click on my bet MMA page or check my Twitter and you should be able to see what my picks are. And um, uh, yesterday on the Contender Series, I had... Let me pull up the card real quick. Give me one second. I'll just quickly recap that, like for like two minutes, just like I did last week. Um, there's a lot of kind of juice favorites, and pretty much all of them won except the main event, which means if you bet um, all the underdogs, you, you might have won a little bit of money, but like barely fractional. So it's kind of not like that attractive of a card because I mostly capped all the favorites as favorites and you know every now and then one of the fights won't go the way you see it and, and the favorite will lose so I didn't see like a ton of opportunity on this card but the plays that I did is I had particular attention on the the Kyle Dacus and Michael Lombardo fight and what I did was I played the over one and a half I couldn't get as much money like my unit size is about 500 bucks give or take and um I, there's only a few books that have the overs, but five, five Dimes had it, and um, a couple others that I have, and a casino in Vegas that I get, there's one that I know of that you can get the uh, over-unders on those fights too. Um, so I got a little bit of action on that, and I tracked that, and I tweeted that out, so hopefully people got that, but I tracked that and put it up as a free pick on my Bet MMA page, so hopefully you cash there. I also tweeted out two untracked plays, which, uh, I played Lombardo by decision at plus 500, didn't cash, I didn't expect it to cash, but I was worried about his cardio, that was my main reasoning for him, and that's why I tracked and wanted you guys all to play the over, 
because I figured he'd be perfectly fine and not gassed early to where it would just be kind of a, an uneventful grappling fight where they kind of will we'll throw some combination combinations and kind of some unskilled strikes every now and then. And there'd be a lot of clenching versus the cage and maybe Lombardo on top at times. And that's kind of how it was playing out. Uh, Dacus did exceed my expectations slightly. I thought he was going to win, but um, he well, he really didn't. It's just Lombardo gassed really hard because before he gassed, I would say Dacus was winning the fight, but it was still you know, somewhat competitive. I, I still gave Dacus the first round, although I think that round was close. And, um, yeah, I played the over because I thought that was really easy money. Like, I, I think they didn't really have much knock. It, it was minus 125. I hit it at minus 125, again at, like, minus 140, and then minus 160 or minus 150, something like that. Like, I hit it a few times. Um, so hopefully you guys hit that, too. And then I also played not Dacus inside the distance. It was plus 145. I thought there was a good chance he would get a finish, but um, I'm always skeptical on guard submission type of guys. And Lombardo seemed like a scrappy wrestler, so I thought he would probably be able to survive. But Dacus, once he got on top, like Lombardo gassed even harder than I thought. And that's what kind of threatened the the that bet, but it ended up cashing and Lombardo survived. And then obviously Lombardo decision didn't hit. So um, I profited a little bit on that card and I'm not going to be playing too much heavy action on these contender series fights. Like there'll be some spots every now and then like that. Like I thought that over was easy. Um, so yeah, but check every Tuesday, just like 15 minutes before the event on my bet MMA page. And I should have some plays. The lines move fucking like crazy because they literally get released on Tuesday. So I might track it and honestly, I could track something at minus 150 and it could be plus 150 seconds later or it could be minus 300 seconds later. So um, if it moves a lot, just message me on Twitter and ask me if the line's still worth it. Just you can do that. If it's like pretty similar, then just play it. Um, but yeah, that's all about that. I ranted about that way too long. Um, and all the other fights were kind of just whatever. Um, I didn't s see any, like, anything really talking about too in depth. But so far, I just want to say this card for Ngannou de Santos, just overall, it really reminds me of last week's card where there's a lot of, like, minus 300, minus 250 to minus 350 type of favorites that I agree they should be favorites, but I think like, and they sh they're probably gonna win, but like I wouldn't play them at that line. And I'm like leaning towards the underdogs a little bit, but I probably won't play them. Like it was kind of like last week. And the thing is like almost all the favorites ended up winning last week. So kind of staying away overall was probably the right idea. The only big underdog that really cashed was Randy Brown and good on people who hit that. But just as like a holistic standpoint, I think a lot of these, um, underdogs I don't think are really a lot of these fights I'm going to stay away from so like the Jordan Griffin fight I do want to tape a little more on Murdoch but I'll probably stay away from that um I haven't taped the Townsend fight I had money on Ledet over Dalka but that fight got cancelled which sucks because I got a good line on that and I thought Ledet was going to piece him up um and then like Gordon Moret I wouldn't play Gordon there I'm probably going to stay away from that and then Ramos and Newsom, probably stay away from that as well. Um, Anders, Vinicius, I know their games, but I want to, I, I haven't fully taped that yet. For some reason, I, I would not fucking play Anders at minus 345. Um, Menafield Craig, I honestly don't think Menafield would be a bad idea in a parlay. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it yet throughout the week, I'll, I'll kind of let you know. And just so you know, this video is just preliminary thoughts. I'll give like technical breakdowns in the Gugabe podcast and later, and I'll, I'll do a couple here too, but I just kind of want you guys to know where I'm kind of at right now. Dober Reyes, I wouldn't play Dober at minus 335. So it's a lot of just kind of whatever. The one dog I'm looking at is Vince Pischel over Roberts. I still want to tape a little more. I've taped pretty much all of it, but there's a few things I want to look at. And I think Roberts is highly overrated. I think he's a fine fighter, but uh, Pischel's not bad, man. Like, he went to war with Joaquin Silva and, and came out on top. 
and I don't see Roberts as like an amazing takedown artist, and I don't think his guillotine and rear naked choke hunting type of game is going to work all that easy on Pischel. People might have seen the Gillespie fight and think like Roberts can repeat that grappling game plan, but it's going to be hard for him to do that because he's not even in the same universe as Gillespie as a wrestler. And then Benavides Formiga. Oh, that line actually. Let me refresh this. That line just changed, which I expected. I expected I expected it to go in the direction of Formiga, and it kind of did. Um, so Benavidez just jumped from like minus 175 to minus 165. I think that's a close fight. I think there might be marginal value on Formiga, but I'm probably not going to play it. I think that Avita is going to win, but like, I see grappling holes in both of their games where Formiga is a body triangle player. We all know that. It kind of bothered me that Dustin Ortiz at the end of the second round got in a pretty easy body triangle on Benavidez, and that can be a checkmate of a round for Formiga if he gets that in. So that kind of scares me. And on the feet, I think this is one of those striking fights, almost like Aguilar and Ige turned out to be, where knockdowns are hard to call. The knockdowns, they're not always skill. It's just a matter of, like, a punch landing clean sometimes. Like, obviously, the more skilled striker is more likely to get a, a knockdown. But whenever there's, they're kind of more evenly matched in the striking, and Aguilar and Ige ended up kind of being a, sort of evenly matched. Um, I just feel like knockdowns are kind of sporadic, and you can't always predict them. Like, you can't rely on knockdowns. So you got to rely on the round winner on the feet. Um if someone has a really bad chin or something, they can become more predictable. But for, like, Benavidez, Formiga, they, they both probably have semi-comparable chins. They've been put out before. But I think Benavidez is probably the more athletic guy, but I do think his athleticism has gone down a little bit. And he has, like, that springing in and out striking style where I feel like he could land a knockdown or he could get caught with a counter. So, like, I just feel like on the feet it could be a little wild. I tend to favor Benavidez there, but Formiga's really improved as a striker. So I like I feel like the feat's a little unpredictable exactly how it will go. Benavidez throws a little more, so I might favor him a little bit, but I would not be too sure about that. And in the grappling, I think that Benavidez has uh what worries me about Formiga in the grappling is when he gets taken down, he can be laid on just in his guard, and that gives the top man just ability to rest because he comes from a jiu-jitsu base, so he doesn't have a really strong base of getting back to his feet all the time. Like, he can scramble out, but if you really get your full weight on top of him and stay chest to chest, you can keep him down, and Ray Borg showed that. And I think Benavidez has better overall takedowns and can get Formiga down if he if he wants to. So it worries me a little bit for Formiga that he could lose some of the, and Benavides is a good scrambler, to where he could lose the top position battle. But at the same time, it kind of also worries me with Benavides as that he relies on a lot of scrambles to kind of win back top position at times. And I could see Formiga in one of those scrambles hopping in a body triangle. I think the path of Benavidez getting a takedown to top position and laying in guard and getting control is more likely than Formiga getting Benavidez's back, slopping in a body triangle, and then riding out time. I think Benavidez's like top position path in that aspect is more likely, but I could see both of them hitting. So I kind of see, like, I, I just see it, sorry, but I just see little sequences that scream each guy can have success but I tend I still tend to favor Benavidez just a little bit but I'm, pro I'm probably just not gonna play like I, I don't think I think there's probably value a little bit on Formiga but I think it's marginal and I like to get a little more of an edge on, on the bookies here but I will be watching live um, and I'll always be ready to live bet if I need to but that's kind of what I wanted to say there um, and then the other fights like Whitmire, Albini and Green, and Ganu JDS. Th 
those fights I'll be talking a little bit with Gugabe tomorrow. Um, no, no action as of now. I'm still kind of line. I'm in line monitoring mode. I don't have many plays right now at all. Um, Maya Martin. That's the fight, probably the most anticipated fight of this week, and I haven't had any action yet. And I'll talk. I'll get more into the details with Gugabe in this fight, but um, I think both guys have paths. Obviously, um, I think Maya's gonna sub him though. I, I really do, and I'm going. I wouldn't play. I I don't love Maya's money line right now at minus 185, and I think that's going to close. The, the odds have kind of been like Maya around minus 185 to minus 200, then it will kind of go down and then maybe bump back up a little bit. I think this is gonna close more like semi close to even money. Like I think Maya's gonna close around like minus 120 to minus 145. That's what I think. Could be wrong, speculation. But I feel like there's a lot of people on Martin and he generally becomes more of his lines improve as the fight goes. I historically looked. So I feel like if you want Martin, you should probably play him now. But the reason why I have red flags for Martin here is a few things and I'm, I'll talk, I'll probably miss some things in this video and beat myself up over it, but I'll make sure I cover that there's so much going on in this fight. But, um, I think Martin's takedown defense, like he, like, like people will see kind of like Woodley or all these guys stopping Maya's takedowns cause it's happened. And so they just see that path as being repeatable for Martin, but I really don't think he has the skills to stop sweep single legs. I think Maya is going to get takedowns pretty much over 90% of this time. Uh, over 90%. If, if this fight takes place 100 times, I think Maya gets takedowns in over 90 of them, unless if he obviously gets KO'd quick and that fight just ends. But if it plays out, I think the takedowns are almost a matter of they're going to happen. Um, I don't think it's like if they're going to happen, it's when they're going to happen. But I think, so what I've been focused on, it's because Maya with those sweep singles, non-wrestlers can't defend them. He's taken everyone down in the UFC in his 28 fights, except Anderson Silva and then like five guys who have D1 wrestling backgrounds. And as a wrestler myself, it's really easy to stop, stop sweep singles if you've been wrestling your whole life. If you haven't, it's really hard. And... It shows that that's a trend in almost that's a trend overall in MMA, and I, I did a video on that too. And if there's no coincidence that pretty much everyone Maya has gone up against and is taken down easy have been non wrestlers, and he makes it look really easy. And another thing, the danger zone of Maya's takedowns are whenever he kind of starts getting you pushed up against the cage. Like he won't push you up, but he'll shoot when your back is close to the cage, so then he can trap you up and then start working for a back take. He even did that to Usman. And Us Usman was in code red alert in that first round. He held onto a wizard for like three minutes. So if he can get Usman in that position, he's fucking going to on Martin. But the takedowns are gonna happen. So what I've been focused on, that doesn't mean Maya's easily gonna win just because he gets takedowns. Um, I mean, obviously, if Martin gets back up, he'll piece up Maya on the feet. But on the ground, that's what I've been focused on. When Maya's, when Maya actually has Martin down, can Martin get back up? And the people who can usually get up from Maya are people who have strong bases. Like, they're always working back up. And because they're working back up, it drains Maya and he starts getting tired and then all of a sudden he starts shooting really shitty shots because he's tired. The best example of that is whenever he fought Rory McDonald. Rory McDonald is an amazing grappler and he just showed that against Neiman Gracie and he's a good wrestler who's, if you take him down, he's working his way up. Watch against John Fitch. John Fitch is probably on APO because he's 40 and can still take a crazy pace. But he kept having to get Maya back, get Rory back down. And if Maya has to be working that much against a guy who has a strong base getting up and it's hard to break them back down, he gets tired. And then if you go watch other fights against Masvidal, who has a stronger base than Martin, but a weaker base than McDonald as far as getting up to his feet, Maya wasn't gassed nearly as much against Masvidal. 
So that's kind of a thing. And Maya might just get a quick submission here anyway. But I'm saying if the fight plays out. But Masvidal, he works up and tires you a little bit, but it's not in the same amount of strength and energy to hold them down as it was against McDonald. That's kind of what I think. That's when Maya starts gassing against guys like Rory. Um, Matt Brown was another guy. Better base than Martin, in my opinion, with better wrestling, in my opinion. Matt Brown does. And Matt Brown has an underrated jiu-jitsu game, too. But Maya wasn't nearly as tired in that fight either. He starts getting a little tired in the third round, but not in like a concerning way to where he's completely fucked. And he still ended up getting Brown down in the third and submitting him. So I think that's a key thing is once Martin gets down, I think he could maybe scramble up. But if a lot of his scrambles are Kimura based sweeps and jujitsu based funda fundamentals to get back up, they're not wrestling type of fundamentals to get up where you're actually tiring him out. So I think it's more of a BJJ game where Maya won't tire out so much. So I don't think he's going to gas all that much. It it could happen. He's getting a little older, but I just, I haven't seen him gas in fights where someone doesn't have a strong working back to their feet type of base. Like Martin more so gets up with like sweeps and things, which I don't think one will work against Maya because I don't think like jujitsu based type of sweeps will work against Maya. I think trying a Kimura sweep on Maya will get you mounted in my opinion. Man, I'm talking a lot about this fight. I'm like, sorry, I'm getting like lost in all my train of thoughts. But I think the overall opinion so far, there's two important things. I think Maya will get takedowns here because of the sweep single leg. And it's a, it's a really good sweep single too. And Martin's a non-wrestler. He got taken down with the same move against Sergio Marais and other guys, Nakamura, other guys that have nothing compared to the, the sweep single that Maya has. And then once he's down, I don't think he'll be gassing Maya out all that much because he doesn't have a, a, a getting back to the feet type of um, energy exerting game. I do think it's possible. I do think he could maybe scramble out with some sweeps. I think it's possible, but I just think he probably won't. And then the third thing is Maya is amazing at getting your back and Martin has giving up back tendencies. It's happened against, um, who, who was it? Leonardo Santos. You guys know who I'm talking about. Leonardo Santos in 2015. I know it's been a long time ago, but Martin hasn't really gone against the same type of grappler. Like I doubt him getting his back taken four years ago means he can defend like I don't think he's he's probably made improvements but I don't think he's probably made the improvements necessary to negate Maya's getting the back ability if that makes sense Maya is fucking one of the best back takers in MMA so I think he'll get his back and then if Maya gets his back the only time we've really seen Martin's back taken is two times against Santos and his choke defense wasn't there man I know it was a long time ago but I think it's more likely than not that it hasn't improved to the point to be able to stop Maya from subbing him. And then two, um, he got his back taken against Sergio Marais at the end of the second or third round. I forget which one. He got his back taken, but time ran out. So we didn't really get to see his choke defense, but we did get to see the fact that he still can get his back taken quite easily. I wish I would have seen the choke defense a little bit. I feel like even if he resisted for 30 seconds, I probably could have seen little things that made me gain confidence or lose confidence on the fact that he could stop the sub. But I think deducing the deduction of 2015, him having virtually no choke defense to a rear naked choke when someone has your back, means he's probably not made the improvements in four years in that position to stop a guy like Maya. And then, yeah, so that's kind of everything. I think the takedowns are there for Maya for the reasons I talked about. I don't think Martin has the type of get-ups that will make Maya tired. Like, he'll, I'm sure Maya will still get tired if the fight plays out a little bit, but I don't think they'll get him super tired. And then round, th and then number three, I think Maya will get his back because of the getting 
back tendencies that one Maya can get people's backs really well, and then Martin just gives it up too easy. And I just don't think Martin has that choke defense. I'm not confident in that. I'm very skeptical on that. Um, to just assume that he can stop chokes from that position, I think is a. I think it's dumber to assume he can stop it than that he can't stop it. I think the evidence suggests that it's more likely than not that he can't stop it. Um, whew. Sorry, I'm like losing fucking... I'm like out of breath talking about this fight. I take this like a motherfucker. And then... With all that being said, my kind of thoughts on the fight is I, I think... Maya winning inside the distance or by submission is a better play. I, I still think it's possible for Martin to win this fight. But I think if the fight's going Maya's way, it's almost like Yaya versus Luke Sanders a couple years ago, or like a year ago. I picked, I played Yaya inside the distance, and it was like plus, it was like plus 200. It was a ridiculous line. And um, it's like, if the fight's going his way, he's mostly just going to get the, he'll probably get the sub. Like if Maya wins two rounds to two clear rounds to one against Martin with grappling, he's probably got the back and he's prob probably going to get the choke. So I'm leaning for Maya inside the distance and currently right now it's plus 166 and his subline's plus 150, which is fucking hilarious, but I'm leaning that inside the distance. But I feel like there's going to be a lot, a, lot, a lot of line movement in this matchup to where... I don't want to make a play yet, and I'm going to be monitoring these lines. Um, yeah. And I think it is possible. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think Maya maybe just getting the back or kind of laying in guard at times and just winning a decision is in the cards to where if his inside, if, where if his money line improves to around like even money, I would maybe want to get that too in case he doesn't get the sub, but I feel like he prop. I feel like he would get the sub, and I feel like the inside the distance is probably the better line, but I just want to monitor the lines. So, in totality, I think Maya's going to sub Martin, and I feel like if Mart the, the way to go if you're leaning Martin is to play him after round one. Like, if he survives round one and just somehow does get back to his feet and all that and kind of end the round strong, then I think he might be worth a play. And if he, yeah, like, I, I just, I don't see how he could win this first round. He's just going to be defending for his life, and Maya's a fucking nightmare early. Um, it's possible. Like, like maybe he's just super fucking prepared, but I don't, I just don't see it. I see him losing the first round, so I think his alive line is the way to go. There's a good chance this could be, like, Heinish and, and um, Shoeface, where Heinish was, like, plus one... 60 or something, just like Martin is pre-fight, and I, got, I didn't really play him, I think I put a half unit on him pre-fight, and then I got him at plus 400 after round one, because he kind of just got out-positioned. So if Martin survives, but gets out-positioned and becomes a huge dog, which I think is very likely, or he might just get subbed, I think it's more worth the fact that you get him at like plus three to 400 potentially with like risking a unit and not even having to risk that much. And submissions are usually front loaded, front loaded. So you kind of mitigate that early Maya sub as well. So that's all my thoughts on the fight. Um, that probably wasn't very cohesive because I have a million thoughts in my mind about this fight, but I tend to be leaning just to be playing Maya inside the distance right now, but I haven't decided. I'll eventually let you guys know. And um, be on the lookout for the podcast tomorrow with Gugabe. Um, thanks so much. And if you guys have any requests on some more in-depth fights this week, I, I probably have time to do a few more. Comment below. Thank you.